what since the second half really how much they've really struggled charged with finding some stability from this guy Welcome back to the next episode of The Journey of a Grassroots Rugby Coach. And today, my guest is Murray Harley. Murray is a retired player who played loose head prop for the ACT Brumbies and is also a member of the C2K Rugby Academy Front Row Club coaching staff. He's a Level 2 coach and recently completed his World Rugby Educators course. He's one of five coaches trained and accredited to deliver the Rugby Australia pilot Scrum Passport Program across the Queensland GPS competition, which is the school competition up there. Murray has also coached at all levels and states, territories in Australia. He's coached in the University of Queensland, the Palmerston Crocs in Darwin, Brothers Townsville, Brothers Juniors, Caloundra, Toowoomba, as well as St Pat's Grammar, Shorncliffe, Padua College, Downlands College, Toowoomba Grammar, He's also coached in Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Irian Jaya. He's coached in the US, in Texas and California. And he's also coached in Tonga and Fiji. Murray has coached Queensland Schoolboys 2 and was assistant coach to the Australian Schoolboys Development 15. And he's also coached Australian universities. In recent years, Murray has volunteered his time at the C2K Rugby Academy, along with other former international and provincial players. This is where athletes attend up to nine sessions a year for position specific skills and training. As a result of that, Murray founded his own company, Engage Madang. Engage Madang was established to provide set piece, so scrum and line out specific training for junior and senior rugby clubs and schools with the aim of promoting safety and correct technique. So if you feel your school or club could benefit from Murray's experience, feel free to get in touch. His details will be in the show notes. During this episode, we chatted about building relationships with players, thinking about doing things differently. Of course, we spoke about scrums and ensuring that the scrum remains safe, but also remaining a contest for the restart. I enjoyed chatting with Murray immensely and could have chatted for hours around the set piece. I hope you get something out of this chat, and as always, feel free to pass it on to anyone you think can benefit from it. If you're new to coaching and have concerns around coaching the right technique about scrums, remember there are a lot of good coaches out there that are willing to help you. Just reach out. Thanks for listening. Please feel free to subscribe, leave a rating. Please enjoy this chat with Murray Harley. And uh, you know, you can stand on the ground and push at a line out or you can compete in the air. Mm. You know, it's a, it's a 50-50 ball game, you know? Yeah. And, and the scrum, um, whether whether we like it or not, is uh, our our genuine point of difference to uh, the other code uh, thirteen side because uh, we play on the same size field with the same posts and same balls and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, and theirs is turned into a joke, and ours is still a. Conflict. We've got a whole heap of things that I think we need to do to fix it up because it takes too long, and you know it's it's you know the refs are fatiguing the players by holding them in a in a cocked position for too long and. You know, the game's never been safer, but people don't go to the football to watch a referee repack multiple scrums. Yeah. But he can't find it. That's a mighty shot. A mighty Mike Lester. When Stan Palecki retired from club footy, he uh, from, he didn't, didn't stop. He then dropped down through the grades. Yeah. And as the young ball came up through the grades, out of one into third grade, into second grade, into first grade, he got ass handed to him mm. but most importantly the great Stanislaw Pilecki said to the kid you and me beers after the game yeah yeah and he said mate when when you did that and I did that and the kid goes wow I had no idea yeah because as you and I talk all the time you don't know what you don't know correct and it's not until you get into that really uncomfortable compromised position mm. do you then go, I need to keep going to my bag of tricks to work out how to get out of it because pushing the sled is easy. 
yeah. dominating against other sides when you are, you know, particularly Polynesian and large and, you know, don't have to work hard on strength and technique, you've got the size, that's when people get in trouble when, the, the, you know, the, the, the athlete who's got the technique, he's been in the gym, but most importantly, he's strong and, and you know, wants to be cunning about what he does. That's the that's way part of rugby. Yeah. Nobody can't find it. That's a mighty shot. A mighty Mark Lester. And, uh, you know, you can stand on the ground and push at a line out or you can compete in the air. Mm. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's a 50-50 ball game, you know. Yeah. And, and the scrum... Um, whether whether we like it or not, is uh, our our genuine point of difference to uh, the other code uh, thirteen side because uh, we play on the same size field with the same posts and same balls and all that sort of stuff. Yep. Uh, and, and theirs has turned into a joke, and ours is still a contest. We've got a whole heap of things that I think we need to do to fix it up because it takes too long, and you know it's it's you know the refs are fatiguing the players by holding them in a in a cocked position for too long and. You know, the game's never been safer, but people don't go to the football to watch a referee repack multiple scrums. Yeah, I know. Nobody can't find it. That's a mighty show. A mighty Mark Lester. Ben, mate. All right, mate. Let's, uh, let's make a start on this, mate. So uh, thanks, Murray, for joining me, mate. Um, just My for, pleasure. Just for the people that listen that may not know who you are, just uh, in a nutshell, um, who you are, where you are, and what is your involvement with grassroots rugby? Murray Harley, uh, currently uh, living in Brisbane. My involvement with rugby is not so much a club land because I'm busy with uh, work, but I do work uh, with a, a, an organisation called C2K, which is a group of ex-players that have got together and dedicated time three times a year um, we do block one in february block two in june july and block three in september october and and we we volunteer time and as a result of that i uh, extended um that hand of friendship and uh, set up a little business uh, very similar to yours bully uh, called engage morang and uh, and I, I coach clubs uh, all around uh, queensland and uh, and wherever i travel with work and uh, whether it be clubs, schools, or individuals, and, and doing some set piece stuff. Um, I'm a retired army officer, uh, safety manager in a big engineering company, and um, uh, ex uh, ACT Brumby and ACT Kookaburra, uh, Australian Army, Australian Services, uh, posted in all parts of Australia and uh, coached in, in all parts of Australia. Awesome. Thanks, mate. Um, what got you into coaching in the first place? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, being an army officer, um, you, you're very much into that um, uh, coaching, um, mentoring mentality. And uh, in, in a battalion um, in Townsville, you know, as a young 22-year-old lieutenant uh, and the company commander says, you're running the company rugby team and you've got a whole heap of leagues and soccer players and AFL and whatever, and you, you've got to, got to mix it up for any company sport. Um, it, 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 it's uh, it's actually um, you know it's been very good for my for my coaching you know you, you uh, so I think that's where it started and you know and I think for me even playing um, you know into unit football in towns or you know my commanding officer uh, Lieutenant Colonel was very keen for me to uh, get a referee's ticket because he said you referee every game you may as well have the ticket as well so uh, and I, that early. Uh, introduction to coaching and, and, and at a level where you really need to explain to people how to do uh, things. Um, I then retired and, and, you know, went straight into coaching and uh, I've been involved with the game ever since. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good history there, Murray. Um, and I, I know you're like me, you're very passionate about the set piece, so we'll have some good conversations about that later. Um, what's some of the biggest heartbreaks or disappointments you've had as a coach and the reason I ask that is because a lot of this stuff is uh, aimed at what I call the junior coach or a new coach and we've all had heartbreak we've all had disappointment um, and at some point everyone feels like they're going to chuck the towel in and walk away but we battle through it um, and the more we can let these young coaches know that you know this stuff happens to everybody these disappointments um, it keeps them 
in in that coaching game. So what's some of the disappointments or heartbreaks you've had? You know, they're, 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 they're everywhere in our coaching careers because, you know, you, you, you know the, the, the kick that hit the post and, and, you, and you, you lost when you should have won. Uh, I was playing um, uh, first grade in Sydney with Manly and um, a great friend uh, who was coaching the Colts actually went to uh, the United Kingdom to coach over there and his name's Bobby Lane, Moose Lane. And and he, he, he asked me... Um, would, would I help coach um, the Colts when in his absence? And, you know, so I was you know, training Tuesday, Thursday with first grade and uh, Monday, Wednesday then with the Colts. And, and we, we went from being, you know, thereabouts to into the grand final. And uh, Eastwood beat us in the grand final. A great mate of mine uh, uh, it was the captain of that team for Eastwood uh, at the time. But we, we, we missed uh, many, many shots of goal that day. And, a young kid called Luke Don, and he, 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 he certainly will not uh, uh, have anything to say about me mentioning his name because, um, you know, they're the things that happen in sport. But uh, we missed uh, multiple penalty goals, and uh, I remember one very late in the game. <laughs> we hit the post, and uh, I thought, oh, God, it's just we're destined today. But, you know, we were the better team. We scored... Uh, uh, two tries to one in a grand final at Concord Oval, and 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 uh, unfortunately didn't come away with uh, uh, the spoils that day. However, Manly won the comp in first grade five years later with the bulk of that Colts team. Um, you know, Simon Rowlini is now with uh, Fiji. Damien Turtle Cummins, who's been involved with Manly and Warringah in recent years. You know, Luke Donnan. There was just a, 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 a quite a few kids who'd gone through, and they were are in that manly team. So out of adversity comes uh, many more things. And, uh, you know, we've, we've had players get injured. We've had, you know, uh, the, uh, families suffer tragedies and all that sort of stuff. And I think it just makes you a better coach, mate. You understand to be a bit more empathetic and, and, and you know, you've got um, two ears and, and one mouth. So you should do twice as much listening as you should be talking. Yeah, that's a great point, Murray. Um... Yeah, and I think we've all been on the end of games. You walk away and you go, how the hell did we lose that game? Like, we've outscored them, we outplayed them. Yeah, and that's that can be heartbreaking as a coach. But like you said, out of... And I've been involved in a few teams that have gone on to bigger and better after, you know, losing games we shouldn't have lost. And yeah. Um, so let's flip that around, mate. What's some of the greatest moments you've had coaching? Yeah, um... You know, and, and sometimes um, our greatest moments don't involve premierships or multiple to uh, bully, as you know. And um, as I said, I was a, uh, an army officer in a former life and I got out of uh, the army and, and, and I, I attended a funeral one day at Nudgee College and the great mate of mine, ex-Wallaby prop, Tony Darcy's son had passed away with Meninja Cockle. And the funeral was massive and then the bingo hall at Nudgee College. And I bumped into two mates who I hadn't seen for a while and both of them said to me, there's a job going at St. Patrick's College, Shawncliffe. Uh, you should apply as the head, head of sport. And, and it was the first time ever that they'd gone into a non-teaching um, role. So I wasn't a teacher, but I'd, I'd had some military um, instructional experience and that sort of stuff. So I applied for the job. Uh, General Cosgrove was, uh, you know, the land commander, chief of army at the time. He, he was a, uh, a referee of mine. I got the job and, uh, you know, Drew Mitchell had been at St. Pat's um, leading up to that and left at the end of 01. I got there in 02. The best player in Australia was Drew Mitchell by three lengths of the footy field and they won one game of first 15 in two years. So after that, I, you know, I was the director of rugby as the head of sport and, and we won two games in the first year and uh, uh, the principal said to me, how do we win? I said, well, you make me the coach and, and we'll, we'll we'll get some more wins on board. And he had to make some tough decisions about uh, some of the teachers who were coaching. The next year we won four games, the next year we won five. And, um, you know, we turned a, a, a sort of very, um, you know, poor cousin, um, you know, underperforming school uh, around. And, and we used sport and rugby in particular as 
as a as a as a mechanism to take everything forward. But academically, spiritually, culturally, you know, socially, the, the, the school just improved out of sight. So we didn't win anything in terms of premierships, but we started to win the respect of the opposition in in the association that we played in and 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 from there, you know, I I, I was lucky enough to do some coaching in in America and in Japan, and you know, coached uh, Queensland schoolboys, and 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 was involved with the Australian schoolboys, and 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 coached, um, you know, later on Australian universities, and it, it's been a good journey. So you know, you, you, coaching is more than the wins that you acquire along the way. It, it's that relationship you have with your athletes. It's a, it's it's changing their behaviour, changing cultures, and. And, and turning them into better players. And, and then the knock-on effect is how many of them actually then finish schoolboy rugby and go and play Colts and then stick with the game. And, you know, I think some of the competitions that rugby are involved with, uh, you know, they put too much emphasis at the schoolboy level and kids get burned out and don't transition into, into club rugby post-school. So that was, you know, my time at St. Patrick's College, Sean Blue was you know momentous uh it was four years um I signed up for three did four uh walked away we turned uh you know a, a fairly underperforming school into a great school and um you know some uh, a kid called uh, jesse mogg was part of that journey with me we've had other kids play rugby league afl soccer volleyball cricket everything at the highest level um People say to me, what did you do at that school? I said, I didn't do anything. The kids did all the running and the swimming and the jumping and the throwing and whatever. Uh, and there's an next army officer, mate. I think all I did was give them, um, you know, turn up with the right attitude, in the right dress, you know, at the right time. And uh, and, and the kids, you know, fundamentally um, performed, which was great. Yeah, and that's, that's an interesting point there because a few of the coaches I've spoken to that have coached at high levels, all of them have said, similar things it's it's not about that win yes it's good to get the win but it's the you know it's the weddings that you get invited to or you bump into the parent or and because i think as young coaches and when we're starting out it's like i've got to win i've got to win i've got to win because that's how i get my next job yeah but but good like i say good directors of rugby and, and good gms of clubs and that they'll look and go I'm, i don't really worry about his his strike rate as Win loss. I want to see what he what he can bring to the club and what he can do for the club, and will he make better humans? And yeah, so we get tied up sometimes in that win loss um, thing, and sometimes it's not about that. Yeah, and you know, um, I was always, uh, you know, and again, we're talking to the junior coaches and and you know, uh, underage coaches. You know, uh, a kid who does rugby all year to me is good on rugby, but we're not actually developing the kid you know we want to have that kid involved with the co-curricular program doing chess or drama or in the theater group you know in a, uh, we want the kid playing volleyball or swimming in term one and then doing rugby in you know the second half of the year and maybe track and field you know and all of a sudden you're developing this this person rather than just the rugby player and, and i think that's where you know schools in particular have you know set themselves up, you know, to win a rugby premiership. But what, what happens to the to the kid who doesn't make it after that? They drop off and we haven't given them enough to, uh, you know, entertain them or keep them in the game. Yeah, and that's, you see that even at club level. Um, but you get that kid, you know, that turns up, just wants to play footy with his mates, never, can't catch a cold in the middle of winter, he's got hands like feet, but in... 15 years he's the club president he's the guy that marks the lines you know he's he's that person because he just loves the game so yeah getting those round, well-rounded athletes through um or they go on to represent in another sport you know and you know you just go well we had something to do with that like um you know that's really good mate um and and, and you know through that you mentioned before my um my my, my passion with the set piece you know it, it's the kid who doesn't look attractive to the coach so at first 15 level they've got six or eight type breakaways in a team because they can all run around like startled gazelles and of course the scrum can only be pushed so far but they compromise um a little bit there to, to, to gain somewhere else and all of a sudden that kid who's 
you know, slightly, uh, um, you know, chubby and, uh, you know, he's got maybe a bit of, bit of pimple and whatever, all of a sudden he matures and, you know, there's a kid playing for the Reds now called Dane Zander. You know, he was third 15 at Nudgee College, mm. you know, goes to Colts and starts to dominate, plays first grade and starts to dominate. He's actually, you know, his story is great because he was actually at uh, the University of Queensland one day and, and, and Norse didn't win, uni won, uh, and which got him into the finals. And as a result of that win, they actually won the premiership. But this kid towed them all up. He went from being a Neville nobody to a bloke who's Cameron Lillycraft's the Queensland coach going, who's that kid? Yeah. And all of a sudden he's, he plays NRC and, and then he's in the red squad. Yeah. Now at the 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 mark, he was never on a high performance pathway. And, and, and rugby's job, our job, is to make sure that kid A, stays in the game, but B, when he matures under his own steam, he's then given an opportunity to, to, to highlight his skill sets yeah. at the next level rather than being pigeonholed and saying, oh, you're not on this high-performance pathway, uh, therefore you can't play at that next level. And I think we've got that fundamentally wrong in Australia. Oh, absolutely, mate. And... You know, you can say what you like about the game, but there's two people you there's there's two people you can't play a game of rugby without, and that's the front row and the referee. <laughs> yes. And and I and I and I say to all my mates that are backs coaches, anyway, I can teach a monkey to catch pass. Yeah. But it, it, it's getting that kid, identifying that kid that that wants to play in, the, might not even want to play in the front row, but convince like working with him and showing him that he's he's going to be good at what he does and it might take you a couple of years to get there, but just keep, you know, teaching him the skills and um, doing that stuff. Cause yeah, I think, I think at the moment, mate, if, if, if I had any young players coming through, I'd say, mate, you want to be a front rower in Australia at the moment because the stocks at the top level are pretty thin. Yeah. Well, I've just read an article today that two goes out for a minimum of eight weeks for the yeah. car and, you know, uh, uh, that front row is a different front row without him in it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Chiefs scored a try right on half time the other day, and the Reds are happy to run off the field at half time. I'm thinking I've never run off the field ever. Um, I, I was so exhausted I couldn't run off. Uh, and then three lots of, you know, successive scrums, and the bloke who's been on the bench for a long time, great kid, working his freckle out. They, they did him over and um, and, and they scored in the corner right on half time. Mm. And I, you know, we, we just don't have the depth and, and we as a code in this country, Bully, have kicked the can down the road for too long. That's why you've got Scrum School. That's why I've got Engage Mudang. That's why uh, Sam Needs has got uh, Scrum Strong, you know, because we have kicked the can down the road for too long. I'm the first to say it's all about safety. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But the game, the game changes immeasurably when you go to uncontested scrums. Yeah. Oh, absolutely it does, mate. Um, and unfortunately, I know down here, coaches use it as a tactic. You know, um, yeah, I think that's our point of difference than all the other sports is that ability to have a, it's still a contest at the restart. Whether it's a line out yep. or a scrum, it's a contest at the restart. Either team can win it. Um, yeah. Um, well, yeah, if they've got the leagueies now, mate, they do the 10 metre kickoffs all the time now. Yeah. Because there's, yeah. there's a chance that they're going to get the ball back. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, you can stand on the ground and push at a line out or you can compete in the air. Mm. You know, it's a 50 it's 50 ball game, you know? Yeah. And, and the scrum, um, whether whether we like it or not, is uh, our our genuine point of difference to uh, the other code, uh, 13 side, because uh, we play on the same size field with the same posts and same balls and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and, and theirs is turned into a joke and ours is still a contest. We've got a whole heap of things that I think we need to do to fix it up because it takes too long and, you know, it's, it's you know, the refs are fatiguing the players by holding them in a in a cocked position for too long and, you know, the game's never been safer, but people don't go to the football to watch a referee repack 
multiple scrums. Yeah, I know. And like, I'm like you, mate. I'll, I'll talk scrums to anybody all day, but it annoys me as well when you sit there go, "What? Why is he repacking this? Just yeah, just let it go. Make a decision. Give a penalty. Something. Because like you said, they get them, cock them in that crouch position, hold them there. Boys are fatigued, and then they wonder why the scrum goes down. Yes. Yes. But yeah, it's um. I agree, mate. There's got to be some things done around um, how it's officiated. But we don't want to go to a league style set piece no. at all. And, and you know, you do feel for the bloke with the whistle. He he he's actually the you know the sole judge of law fact. And time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But when you have never played in that position, it's very hard to tell a subject matter expert that he's doing something wrong. Because <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about you, mate. I never did anything wrong at scrum time. <laughs> no one ever did, mate. And it should be, we should go back to the old Puritan days, mate, where it was just, you know, forwards, V, v forwards, and as the great Alec Evans always says, only two things are in a game, the rugby referees and backs. Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly right, mate. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I heard a good, uh, I can't remember who it might have been, um, buddy, what's his name, Gus, from the... Waratahs, the young loose head prop. Ang uh, Angus Bell. Might have been, yeah, Mark Bell. Might have been a chat with him the other day and he said, why don't they get an ex front rower in the TMO's box? Yeah. And like, not, not, uh, not, not to review, but like you could be just sitting there and going, tie heads down or, you know, just give cues to the referee and then speed that right up. So. Yeah, well, funny bully there. I, I read an article this afternoon where uh, uh, Rassi Rasmus has said something very similar. Yeah. Uh, even at scrum time, roll that referee on so he can adjudicate the scrum, and then roll it to the other referee, go back on to let general play go on. I think that's a little bit bizarre, but I like your concept of uh, having somebody up a bit higher because, uh, you know, something needs to be done. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Um, and, and we saw what happened in the World Cup final when uh, England lost their tight end after seven minutes. South Africa, you know, won a game that uh, was, was clearly there to be won, but they won it. They replaced four, three massive humans with three even bigger humans. Uh, and and the, the English finisher, who's meant to be on for five, 10, 15, 20 minutes at the back end of the game, all of a sudden he's got to play 73. He, he, he could hardly walk. Yeah, oh, he was he was gone at the end of it, and you can't blame him either. Um, no. So what what are some of the solutions around? Because I think, like for me, it's yeah, it's a coaching issue, but it's also having the coaches confident enough to coach it um, at at a young age. Because um, most of them are just dads that have been given a bag of balls and a whistle and. You know, they've got mums chirping in their ears about, you know, safety and they don't want their kids hurt and this and that. So, um... yeah, I, and, you know, the game, uh, you know, the governing body, Rugby Australia, has got all its principles and, and everything there. I, I just feel as a code, we've gone too electronic. We've gone, here's the PowerPoint presentation, tick, 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 tick where coach education is more than that. Coach education isn't what's on the PowerPoint. It's all the things that aren't on the PowerPoint, the nuances, the idiosyncrasies, yeah. you know, the, the, yeah. the, the positioning of the hands, the feet, you know, all of those things. And, and, and I think we've missed a significant uh, boat here where, you know, the ship has sailed in many respects, where coach education, if, if I'm a, a level one or level two, level three, level four coach, for, for me to have my license to participate, I should be doing professional development more. And, and I think we've lost uh, the, the art of doing that professional development. And I think, you know, whether it's Rugby Australia or the respective states and territories around Australia, they think that unless you've got their shirt on, you can't deliver the training. Whereas people like you and I, Sam Needs, you know, Mark Bell, you know, Matt Ryan, you know, people should be sent to do level ones, twos, threes as the subject matter experts to deliver it rather than the 19, 20, 21 year old development officer who's never packed in the scrum or lifted into the line out before. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Because um, I think too, it's a, it's a fear from the junior coach that they're going to get it wrong and someone's going to get hurt. Yeah, and mate, oh, I can tell you as a safety manager, there's a couple of, a couple of words that are significant in the act and that's duty of care. Mm. Yeah. 
And coaches now will go, we haven't got the athlete for that. We haven't practiced that skill. We're going uncontested. Now, that, that's not adhering to the laws of the game. And that, the intent of the code is to have that genuine contest over the ball. Um, and, and, and I get why coaches do it. But, you know, um, I've also, um, you know, been quite critical of coaches who don't go down that path and, oh, we haven't got a scrum machine. I said, you don't need a scrum machine, yeah. mate. We've got all sorts of skills and drills that you and I work on all the time, Bully, yeah. you know, with, 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 with old mauling pads or tackle pads and getting body shape right and understanding that, you know, and, and you mentioned uh, the mum before, you know, clearly dad, you know, where you've got the, the, the male, female um, and the child, children coming through, dad may have played the game. So he gets that, that it is a contest and it is, there's a, there's a likelihood that heads may be uh, yeah, belted and whatever. Mum hasn't done that. So you've got to get mum through that journey of saying, you know what, I like what I see here and my kid can play in the front row now. Because mum ultimately is doing a lot of the signing off on little Johnny playing. And, and once you can get mum uh, across the line, you know, the kid then feels pretty good about himself. Uh, as I said, I, I don't think the game's ever been safer, but we still, uh, it's a collision sport and, and people do get injured and that's what you have to, you know, understand. But, um, you know, what you and I do and others do in our space is to make sure that we're looking after the head and the concussion piece. We're looking after the shoulders and the Cuffs. We're making sure that they're in the right uh, body shape. And that body shape isn't just a scrum drill. It's the tackle, the jackal, the clean out, it's lifting in the line out, and it's the scrum. And if they're in the right shape, they're going to stay, you know, in the game longer and, and, and not do damage to themselves or want to push really hard for two scrums and then have the fuel tank just run to empty and they've got nothing to give for the rest of the game. Yeah. Oh, mate. And... Once you, I've started coaching the first 15 this year as well at schools and even just getting the forwards into, like we're just doing some, you know, um, single band work, getting them into shape and the loose forwards going, oh, I, I don't need this at scrum time. I said, no, you don't, but you need it when you're jackling or when you're tackling and they're going, oh, I said, it's, it's just, if you can keep this shape, you'll, you'll jackle better, you'll have better tackle height. Blah blah, you know, blah 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 blah, and then they said, "Oh, yeah, when are we going to get the scrum machine out?" And I went, "What do you want a scrum machine for?" And like the the teacher in charge goes, "Oh, we got a twenty thousand dollars scrum machine out there." And I went, "So?" And and then like when the Crusaders were there, they were talking about it, and Jace Ryan turned around and goes, "What do you want a scrum machine for?" He said, "We use one about three times a year just to, and that was just to get our timing, and that's it." And all these kids just went, "Oh." We've just been pushed. I said, you don't need Yeah, like you said, you don't need it. Teach, teach the kids how to do it um, safely. Yeah. Um, and, and I say to both parents and the schools or clubs that have invested in those uh, scrum that anyone can push the sled. Mm. Doing it with the right technique and maintaining the body shape and doing it in a coordinated fashion, that happens from doing individual stuff one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-one, three-on-two, you know, even building a four-on-four so that, you know, um, you know, it, 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 there's so much more you can do. And as you just said, the, the last piece of the puzzle is that coordination and timing. Mm. That is what the scrum machine is for. Because yeah. to all those coaches out there, the scrum machine doesn't push back. Yeah, that's what it says. It's just a tackle bag on wheels. It doesn't hit back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't move. It doesn't drop its outside shoulder. It doesn't close the gap on, you know, wedge in on the hooker so you can't get your head in and all that type of stuff. Um, yes, mate. Exactly right. But we, we can talk about that for hours, mate, and most guys will switch off. So <laughs> um, what about um, how do you keep your training enjoyable for, so like even the stuff you do with the C2K or the schools or whatever, so you've got, you know, um, an athlete there that's potentially an elite player or on that track to be, you know, the Reds or whatever. But then you've got this new kid coming in that's still trying to learn. So you want to progress the guy like the Dane Zanders of the world while you've got this kid that's turned up because he's probably tried every other... Like, he, he can't kick, so he can't play soccer or AFL. He's too slow to play league, so he turns up. And you've got to develop him to keep him in the game 
while keeping the next that higher level player engaged at the same time what's some of the stuff you do for that mate yeah and and you raise a really good point there because you know you, you don't want to hold that like back but you don't want to cut so that the, the gap between the haves and the have nots is is too great so you know a lot of what I do, as I've said again, you know, being an ex-army officer in, in, in a safety and risk management sort of role, um, you, you're constantly assessing what athletes you've got in your group. And if you've got the numbers of people to help you, don't delay the group that's been with you for a while. Maybe have an opportunity to have somebody just do a one-on-one -on -one with that person and get them up to speed. You know, at C2K, you know, some of the people we've got there, you know, we, we've got, you know, you know, Tommy Lawton, Steve Moore, you know, Matt Holt, Robbie Russell, Tom Murphy. You know, we've got Troy Colley, you know, um, Anthony Matheson, you know, uh, the list goes on of people who nobody really runs it, but, you know, we just identify what's happened and we move people and, and we make, but most importantly, and to your very point, we make it fun. So, yeah. so the kids, yeah. you know, we don't we don't rush them through. And I call it the A to Z. We don't say we did A, B, C last week. Therefore, we're going to do D, E, F this week, and then all the way through. We keep coming back to the core skills. So yeah. you've got to get your A, B, Cs right. And then once we master that, we can have a look at D and come back. So we're never getting too far ahead of ourselves. But most importantly, uh, A, you make it fun. B, you add a little bit of competition into that fun. And you see a lot of the times that form goes out the window as soon as things get competitive. So it's a really good opportunity because if you're doing a video session, the video doesn't lie bully. So when yeah. you can he, he, here's the here's the uh, the iPad that was you just then, and he goes, "Oh no, no!" And I said, "No, you." And then all of a sudden they go, "Oh yeah." And and one of the things that we do uh, well is is really create a culture where if they're working in small groups, they're not. If they're finished work, they're actually not off. They're still on, and it's that peer on peer coaching where the athlete is saying to the other athlete. Mate, your right hip was too high up, or your knees were too straight. Because as we as we laughed about it at the start, you know, when we were just talking, the athlete doesn't know what they don't know. They can't can't see. So all of a sudden, not is not only is the coach giving them that feedback, but it's that peer on peer feedback which makes uh, their understanding and that whole sense of team and collective so much more important. They don't turn around and go, well, what would you do, mate? Yeah. Because I didn't know that. And all of a sudden, you're just starting to build and build and build and and and, and then they're improving all the time without really focusing too much on the whole. They're just doing all the little sums. Uh, and once they get the, the little things right, the takes care of itself. Yeah, no, you're right, mate. And yeah, it's good, it's good to get that peer feedback um from others and i've seen some of the stuff you've done bully with uh, the melbourne rebels women's team you know, like you know for girls who are you know like the mel Carwas who are you know really mm. experienced girls who are really you, you don't you don't want to create this this gap you want to actually bring the younger and less experienced closer to the more experienced and the best way to do that is to is to put them under pressure yeah. not not stupidly but smartly yeah yeah, that's right. And there's plenty of ways you can put them under pressure without, um, you know, going 15 on 15, like like you said, just, you know, even 2v1s and over, overload them, you know. Um, you know, 10-man 10, 10 scrum versus an 8-man scrum, just putting that extra, you know, um, you can get quite inventive with some of the stuff. Yeah. Putting them under pressure, and, you know. Exactly. And, you know, uh, sometimes the first grade or first 15 scrum is superior to the the next team down. So why does the second or the reserve grade team have to have eight? Why not put 10 or 12 on that mm. scrum against eight or six from the yeah. first? Yeah. You know, put the two flankers from the first on the side of the of the seconds. All yeah. of a sudden it's eight. Or well, you know, and, and it sounds stupid, but um, the more you can do that and have the live stuff happening, mm. the better the game's going to be. And as I always say to people, if you can belt your club mate 
on a Tuesday and a Thursday. Oh, yeah. Putting a bloke in another colour jumper on a Saturday is pretty easy. Yeah. Military has a saying, mate, train hard, fight easy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's true. Yeah. And that's what we tell our boys. The hard stuff's done at training. So game, games are fun. Train, training's the hard bit. And some of the hardest scrums I've been in is first grade versus second grade. Oh, un- undoubtedly. Oh. That. Because the second grader thinks he's been done yeah. uh, by someone and he wants to turn it yeah. up. And, and it, they turn up sometimes. Yeah. You know, I've been in clubs where, you know, it was first grade versus second grade, second grade versus third grade, third grade versus fourth grade. And, uh, you know, you were preparing yourself for the weekend's activities, mm. uh, you know, um, you know, I've even coached women's at uh, particularly at University of Queensland, Bully, and and I said to sixth grade one day, you guys can come over here. We're doing scrums. I, I, I laid some very strict parameters. Yep. But all of a sudden, the girls were up against a, a, a hefty sort of men's team who weren't going to put it on them. But yep. it, it was genuinely live. And then Colts 3, over you come, we're doing line outs. Yep. Same thing. Win our ball, you win your ball. Just let the girls understand, you know, the pieces and all that sort of stuff and they just get educated on the run and by god you get some improvement because yeah. it's training against casper the ghost doesn't win your games of football because no. there's no involved you know it, it, it's all of a sudden yeah. just creating some scenarios i understand that we're not playing against them so you know we don't have to worry about that but as we're training and we're learning we can do certain things differently and and making it more game realistic uh is really beneficial. And as, as you and I know, there is that kid who leaves school at the end of uh, November, December, and comes back two or three months later, and they go, who's that kid over there? Well, that was the kid who played in the 13 Cs last year. All of a sudden, he's put on seven inches, and yeah. you know, he's, yeah. oh, mate, you're not in the Cs anymore, champ. You're, you're up here in the A's, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's what rugby's got to do. Yeah, and that good point about playing against ghosts, um, some of the stuff we do, even at Clubland, like we always do live line outs and I'll often say to the guys defending, um, compete, but don't win the ball in the air. So they're, they're in, they're up and they're there. And you say, God, mate, you look, and they'll go, yeah, the, the, the defence beat me on that one. But they're not jumping against nobody. They're actually jumping against um, yep. opposition, knowing that the guy can beat, beat them in the air. But um, So, yeah, just getting them, like you said, putting that pressure on them. Oh, that's good, mate. Um, just the last one, mate. What if you could go back in time to the when you uh, started your coaching journey? What piece of advice would you give yourself, knowing what you know now? Oh, you know, enjoy it. Um, um, don't ever take yourself too seriously. Um, you know, we've all been guilty of uh, uh, yelling out from the sideline and and you know, carrying on like a two year old, but. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, we've certainly changed as a society. We've changed as a code. We've changed as uh, as rugby players. And, uh, you know, the youth of today uh, certainly don't like being talked to like we were talked to. And no. uh, you've got to attack the same problem a different way. And, you know, being um, more um, emotionally intelligent uh, and understanding the individual and what makes that person tick. You know, I was pretty fortunate being the army officer and I spent the time in, in the school system and, you know, just, you know, being there for your players, understanding, you know, that they've got work, they've got into financial year commitments. So some of them like to go skiing every June, July in the middle of the football. So there's all sorts of things, you know, what Melbourne rugby's like and Canberra rugby's like, uh, you know, uh, so, so I think, you know, plan ahead, um, do the best you can, make it fun, uh, make it inclusive. You know, it's great that we do, that people try and do wallaby level drills. <laughs> 90% of the time, it's a waste of time doing that drill. Yeah. So go back to your ABCs and progress from there. And, um, you know, uh, you know, the code is, you know, in a precarious place. And, you know, um, the gap between professional and, and community is what I see at community level uh, at a, on a weekly basis, whether it's juniors, schools, um, you know, grade, you know, the code is alive and well. And yeah. uh, 
uh, whether that's in Perth, Melbourne, Canberra, Sydney, Brisbane, you know, I spend a bit of time in Townsville and Darwin with work. You know, the code is alive and well. You know, we've just got to um, not do things that we've always done. We've got to think about how to do things differently. You know, I think the code is struggling in some country regions. You know, the tyranny of distance is one thing. Um, you know, mining oil and gas, fly in, drive out, you know, fly in, fly out, drive in, drive out, rosters are killing. Uh, some some places people live on the eastern seaboard, they can train during the week, but can't play on the weekend mm -hmm. or the week after they can't train, but they can play. And how does it coach for a water bloke who's training versus a bloke who... So there's all sorts of things that, you know, the code needs to, to, to really, uh, you know, aim up with. But as I said, Bully, you know, it's, it's about not taking yourself too seriously be the best coach you can be, go and get as much professional development as you can. Uh, I think one of the problems with our sport at the moment, and thank the Lord for Stan, uh, is that we can actually see more rugby these oh, days. Oh, yeah. Foxtel was great and it provided us with a wonderful product. But uh, again, the haves and the have-nots, you know, um, unless you had it, you weren't able to watch. Uh, uh, whereas now I think you know, there's a there's a genuine... Um, uh, desire to have more footy on 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 the TV, and and we need our our our, our young athletes, both male and female, and our coaches, uh, watching more footy as well. Because you know uh, we don't want to become uh, robots and be coached exactly the same way to play exactly the same way. We want to, you know, if we've got a, a good you know two jumper, why we throw to the back? If we've got uh, mm. you know good wingers, let's let's counterattack and do what we need to do to be to be productive. Don't, don't, you know, run the apples, then the oranges, then the pears, because that, if Sydney heads opens up in front of you, run through it and score the try, you know, don't worry that you've got three yeah. more and you're sequencing and, you know, be instinctive and, and coach to be, um, you know, better, be, coach to play with the ball in hand, you know, you know, rather than kick, oh, oh I'm <laughs> a tactical piece, but... You know, I think we, you know, the Reds killed themselves the other night. It was like watching a game of forcings back. It was just terrible. You know, there was, I think the Lord, the uh, Waikato Chiefs didn't have um, uh, Mackenzie playing for me. He would have cut him to pieces, that he yeah. uh, had balls kicked down his throat. So, yeah, no, it's, uh, mate, I, I, I love it, Andrew. You know, it's, um, you know, the, the, the code's been good to me. I like to give back to the code. You know, um, I think, you know, um, there's a lot we can do. Um, and, and what you're doing is great and what, what others around Australia are doing to, to continue to promote the game. I think, you know, it all goes well, but um, I, I, there is some things that, uh, as we talked about earlier, that need to be tweaked. But, um, you know, coach education to me is, um, is, is critical. Yeah, no, that's a good point, mate. And that keeping yourself up to date with the uh, current trends and best practices and stuff, you know, and you, you're probably the same. I'll, I'll go and watch a junior game of footy and you see the coach doing these warm-ups and you just go, oh, you've seen that on YouTube or the All Blacks or, you know, because you just, you know, the guy's got no, um, he doesn't know what he wants to achieve. I saw an under-12s coach do a 45-minute warm-up and they spent 30 minutes doing a, a rolling mall at under-12s and the hooker couldn't even hit the jumper. And I'm just going, what are you doing, mate? Like, anyway. Yes, they, mate. Don't <laughs> don't even start me on that, bully, because uh, there therein lies the problem. I think. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, but, um, uh, we we will keep chipping away, and That's it, uh, mate. Uh, I think uh, you know we've got so much to offer. It's an international code. You know, you look at the expansion of the game in America and through South America. You look at the professional game in Japan and France and, uh, and and the United Kingdom. You look at some of the other burgeoning markets through Europe. You know, the sad thing about today in Australia is we've got two lots of professional rugby players. One who wants to be a wallaby and the other one who wants to go and play rugby and make lots of money overseas. And sadly, um, our, t our talent pool uh, doesn't live in Australia. It lives elsewhere. Yeah. And across the ditch, they're still very lucky that they want people to stay and then once they finish their all black career then they go and chase the superannuation dollar uh, unfortunately we've got people who um, uh, chase it a bit too early in my humble opinion and um, and good luck to them that they can make an earn but um, uh, there's always this constant backfilling whereas New Zealand has this steady flow up and uh, sometimes our player drain 
causes and coach train causes uh, our code uh, significant um, concerns at times. Yeah, yeah, and it's not an easy solution either. I think, unfortunately, if you're going to get paid to play or coach overseas, why wouldn't you? Exactly right. Exactly right, mate. Um, yeah. So, but that's that's some discussions for another day over a few beers again, mate. So. Yeah, look forward to that day, Bully. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. Great, mate. And uh, thank you very much for all the good work you do. Yeah, mate. Thanks so much for uh, coming on. And you know, we've had a few chats over over uh, social media about different scrum stuff. And and probably the other thing I, that I want to put out there is, you know, you can and like we like there's myself and you and there's Sam, and we all respect what each other does, but we don't always agree. It's the it, wonderful thing about rugby, oh, mate. Is, yeah, and, and I think. You know, like coaches are scared to go. Well, I don't actually agree with what Murray's saying. Well, that's one. Have a discussion about it, and you still don't need to agree with him. But you know, I think as young coaches, you get you get overwhelmed and just go, "Oh, I don't, I don't feel like I can have that discussion," and, and blah blah blah. So, just something to, to bear in mind. You don't have to agree with every coach that you talk to. Um, Absolutely not. And uh, you know, uh, my package isn't something that. Is just me. It's I've had Alec yeah. Evans, Bob Templeton, Bob mm. DeWine, Fox O'Shea, you know, Lead and Ellen, Jeff Diddy, a, a whole Mike Beveridge. There's a raft of people, and I've taken little bits of everything to yeah. create me. Yeah, and, and that's how I deliver. And and being an ex army officer and, and 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 being in education and safety, you know, you're confident in delivering the message and. And, and it's not just on a PowerPoint presentation, it's, you know, by demonstration and examples. Yeah. And, and, and so, so I've got a unique style and um, you've got a bit of size and you play to the level. So you've got some presence and you can deliver that message and, and hopefully, um, you know, uh, people see that and, uh, and benefit from it. You know, I'm blessed to have um, uh, a lot of good, uh, good kids who've come through respect programs here in uh, in Queensland and uh, are starting to to do good things and um, you know I didn't play for Australia but um, I think um, you know those that do sometimes can't coach um, and, and and there's others who haven't done so but are good coaches and uh, you know for me uh, you know it's great that these professional players finish their careers and go into coaching. But I think they should go back and coach an underage team, then a first 15, then a Colts, then a grade, rather than going straight into being an assistant coach in a professional program. You do not learn uh, by going straight to uh, the, uh, the top. You, you've actually got to learn and make your own uh, mistakes and, and, and work out what makes the kids tick and then the young Colts tick and then the men uh, or the ladies tick, um, you know, uh, and understand that there's so many things. And as a coach, well, you know, mm. you, you become a mathematician, a gynecologist. Oh. You, you become everything because you, they just want, they want a question answered. And, yeah. and you're the person that they can have that relationship with. And, and, and that's the wonderful thing. You, you talked about bumping into athletes, you know, in town at, at bars and getting invited to weddings and, you know, engagement parties. That is the satisfying piece of mm. being a it, it's it's what you gave them and and the stories that they are you know mr harley you 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 created me you 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 i'm the man i am today because of you and you did this and you did that it's so lovely and uh, i hear from soldiers all the time i hear from uh, uh, ex players all the time and it's lovely and uh, i don't know whether you saw um uh, on the weekend mick heenan from the university of queensland club coached his 250th yeah a game at UQ, and uh, that includes a, 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 add a hundred at, at GPS onto that as well. That, that's a significant effort. But when you watch the footage, all of the players will say that he was a great coach, but he was mm. a better, better man manager. Yeah, off the field, and whether it was personally or professionally, it's that relationship that you can have with your players. You know, it's hard at the junior level because mainly dads and that sort of stuff, but teachers at schools or you know good people at Colts and, and, and grade, that's what rugby is all about. It's creating those uh, relationships and creating a culture. And as we said, it's not all about winning. Sometimes uh, there's more to it than winning, but winning does help because that, that's, that's what keeps bringing people back. And that's what we all aspire to do in life. 
Yeah. No, this has been awesome, mate. I really appreciate your time. Um, I'll, get, I'll get I'll get all your details um, for all the stuff that you do, and I'll put it in the show notes. So if anyone wants to reach out, it's up around Brizzy or anywhere, um, they can get in contact with you um, to get some stuff done. I know you, I know you do travel a bit and get stuff done at clubs and schools and all that type of stuff. So spreading the gospel of the set piece one 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 at a time. So I mean, I really pre- appreciate your time, Murray. Oh, thank you, Andrew. And uh, as I said, mate, uh, thank you for the opportunity. And um, uh, look forward to hearing from people um, if they've got any concerns and uh, I'm more than happy to help. All right. Thanks, mate. Really appreciate it. All the best. See you, Bully. Thanks, mate.